a story of me not being alone. Um, it goes back um, when I was younger. I was uh, in Bible college. I was. Uh, I decided to go to Bible college actually in the U.S. in Rochester, and I grew up in a sort of a single parent family home. I had a younger brother who was autistic, so the opportunity to take off, I took off and I went down. But growing up, you know, having a lot of responsibility, I did a lot of different things. It took a lot of my time, and I didn't have much time to sort of be a kid and be a teenager. And so when I went to the Bible college, it was an opportunity to suddenly be that. But I found that I didn't relate well. I didn't relate well with my peers because I grew up in what we call standard, typical, um, family scenarios, you know, parents were, you know, take care of everything, they took care of the, you know, very standard American family lifestyles. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, naturally the school leadership, they looked at me and said, oh, you have a lot of responsibility, they put me in leadership in different areas, which, you know, at that time when you're 18, 19, it's like, that's great, that's awesome, but all it did was it made it more isolated for me. So as things moved on and throughout the years I was there, I was there for about four years. So in my third year though, I remember it was middle of winter and Rochester's in a snow belt. So it was just massive snowstorm coming down on the campus. And I was walking about and it been a week of where I found people were just not, I couldn't connect with people. You know, they weren't talking. I mean, I had a couple friends, a few friends by then. There was a few projects that where people worked with me, but in terms of, of spending that moment, I suddenly had a huge sense of loneliness. And out of that came a sense of anger. And so I realized that I was angry at God, I was angry at, for, for all the things that happened, being a native person and having to experience the, the, that strong and loneliness. And I realized it wasn't just me, but it was my parents and it was an inter intergenerational thing. And I literally sat there in the middle and I walked out to a pond actually. And the pond was frozen over and it was middle of the night, snow was coming down. And I literally looked, sat there and I looked up and I said, and yelled and, and literally said to God, why would you let this happen? If, <laughs> if you create people and everyone's supposed to be unique, supposed to be especially chosen, why would you let such atrocity happen? To not just me, but my people, but all around the world, such atrocities. And then, I re and then I just felt this all of a sudden this sense of comfort, and and it, all I heard in my the voice say was, "You're not alone. I'm with everybody. I stand and I and I'm in the those moments with everybody. You know, and in the Bible college, you learn how to be. You learn about." you know, the story of Christ. You hear about the pain and the suffering of the cross. But it's not until you, you hear the, have that moment you realize that suffering, that pain on, a, on an individual basis. It doesn't matter what color, what creed, where we come from. Um, God's been there. And so in that moment, by that pond, in the middle of the night, all that snow, it was cold, minus 20, and yet at that point, that's when I felt God's that you're not alone. And I've, you know, totally changed my attitude afterwards, but yeah, I'll never forget that thing.